Chapter 24 The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the people of Israel to bring you pure oil from beaten olives for the lamp, that a light may be kept burning regularly. Outside the veil of the testimony in the tent of meeting, Aaron shall arrange it from evening to morning before the Lord regularly. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. He shall arrange the lamps on the lampstand of pure gold before the Lord regularly. You shall take fine flour and bake twelve loaves from it. Two tenths of an ephah shall be in each loaf. And you shall set them in two piles, six in a pile, on the table of pure gold before the Lord. And you shall put pure frankincense on each pile, that it may go with the bread as a memorial portion, as a food offering to the Lord. Every Sabbath day Aaron shall arrange it before the Lord regularly. It is from the people of Israel as a covenant forever. And it shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it in a holy place, since it is for him a most holy portion out of the Lord's food offerings, a perpetual due. Now an Israelite woman's son, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the people of Israel. And the Israelite woman's son and a man of Israel fought in the camp, and the Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name and cursed. Then they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shalometh, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in custody till the will of the Lord should be clear to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Bring out of the camp the one who cursed, and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head, and let all the congregation stone him. And speak to the people of Israel, saying, Whoever curses his God shall bear his sin. Whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him. The sojourner, as well as the native, when he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. Whoever takes a human life shall surely be put to death. Whoever takes an animal's life shall make it good, life for life. If anyone injures his neighbor, as he has done, it shall be done to him, fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Whatever injury he has given a person shall be given to him. Whoever kills an animal shall make it good, and whoever kills a person shall be put to death. You shall have the same rule for the sojourner and for the native, for I am the Lord your God. So Moses spoke to the people of Israel, and they brought out of the camp the one who had cursed and stoned him with stones. Thus the people of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, He is Elijah. And others said, He is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Hello and welcome to Bible Time. Today, Leviticus chapter 24. In here, in this chapter, you hear about the lampstand, which is inside of the tent. It needs to be burned all through the night in its use, and it has to use the olive oil. Now, this lampstand is made out of gold, and uh, also it speaks about the holy bread. Uh, Twelve loaves of bread in two stacks, on a golden table. This is called the table of the showbread and it is made out of gold and the bread was eaten by the priest. Now these two items are very very important because it reflects who Jesus is. It was a symbol of pointing to the Messiah. As Jesus says, I am the light of the world. That's what the lampstand stands for. And Jesus also said, I am the bread of life. So that is what the 12 loaves of bread on the gold table. 
Um, now, he also speaks about blasphemy, uh, which is to speak directly against God. It was a capital offense when we blaspheme, it must be dealt with death. And that's why we find in the ministry of Jesus, when he, the first ministry he did was that he went to synagogue and read Isaiah and after reading Isaiah uh, saying that uh, Spirit of the Lord is upon me uh, and that he would heal the sick and proclaim the gospel and he closed the book and he sat down and he said this is fulfilled today in my reading which means Jesus says I am I am that person that Isaiah is talking about, the Messiah. People thought he was blaspheming. And so they took Jesus out and ready to throw him off the cliff and kill him. Because why? This blasphemy is applied. However, Jesus was the Messiah. That was the problem. Uh, so many times Jesus was accused as blasphemy, saying, making... Uh, offense to God but actually he was speaking the truth now in the Old Testament here in Leviticus chapter 24 there is a simple rule that is applied when it's dealing with crime uh, for example if you kill somebody then your life will be taken as well uh, also eye for an eye tooth for tooth if you take someone's eyes then guess what your eyes will be taken out if you take someone's tooth then your tooth will be taken out. Now, this is very important because first of all, what he's talking about is limit in revenge. If somebody takes one eye, you don't go out and take two eyes. You're only limited to one. Uh, whatever damage was caused, that's the only damage you could do. Um, you're not to go beyond that. So it limits revenge. Second thing that it shows is to, to respect other people. Uh, if you don't want to be punched in your face, don't go out and punch someone in the face. If you don't want to be punched, then don't punch other people and respect other people. And this comes fulfillment with love one another as you love yourself. Now, Mark chapter 6, verse 14 through 29. Here we find the story of the death of of the John the Baptist. Now John the Baptist was confronting Herod for taking his own brother's wife, Herodias. And and brother was still living but he unlawfully took his wife and so John was really confronting him and the Herodias was so upset at John and but Herod respected John as a holy person from God but he made a dumb mistake what happened it was on his birthday the King Herod brought a high official to his banquet and had uh, his daughter dance uh, perform a dance to them and it pleased everyone and Herod in front of everybody promised that he will do anything whatever she asks so she went to Herodias her mother and told him what she wants so Herodias says I want the head of the John the Baptist on a platter and thus Herod cannot return to his own oath by declaring that he will do anything he had to kill the John the Baptist and he was beheaded and this is the story it's kind of sad story right uh, it's unfortunate that John the Baptist died in this way um, it doesn't tell us that God just sent the thunder or angels to rescue him anything like that but his ending seems to be so sad at the same time John the Baptist lived one of the most beautiful life. He came to do exactly what he did, and that is to introduce Jesus into the world. And he did that so wonderfully. And uh, when we think of it in another perspective, uh, that John is now with the Lord, and he has completed his work, and he wasn't afraid to speak the truth no matter who was in front of him and that's the life that John lived and so God will reward him so this is not a sad ending in a way it looks like it but I want you to know that life does not stop at this 
but his life continues with God. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to believe, Lord God, that no matter what happens here and how it appeared to be on the surface, what it matters is that how we lived our life for you and God. Pray that we would live our life like John, Lord, completing our mission and do not afraid of those who are in front of us and always speak the truth. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.